Oh, hi. Welcome back to our vegan kitchen. I'm going to make a beautiful recipe for you today that I don't do often enough considering how much my husband loves mashed potatoes. And that is for vegan meatloaf. Oh. I used to make it all the time when we first went vegetarian and vegan, and now I'm hardly ever making it. And I'm asking myself why. It's not difficult to make. It's hearty. It's full of veggies. This is what my dad used to do when I was a little kid, and he wanted to sneak veggies in there so that I would eat them. He would put them in meatballs and in meatloaf. They go perfect in there. Smart. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, uh, very basic. We're using beans, so chickpeas, and instead of a double can of chickpeas, where's my secret ingredient? It's right here. I'm using... Uh, organic refried beans. Mm. These are just beans, water, and salt. But it's already in a paste because I'm, yes, lazy. <laughs> lazy sloppy, as my mom would say. I don't care. If I can get it done easier, fine. So, you have a beautiful mirepoix here, which is French cooking for carrot, celery, onion. So we're going to saute this up in our fry pan. I'm going to use a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. If you are a low or no oil person, you don't need that. You can just uh, use a little water if you want to, or if you need to, I should say. So I'm going to put that in here to saute while I'm crushing up my chickpeas. So let's get these started. This is a lot of veg. But we like that. Yes. The real recipe is much less veg. But I really like a lot of veg in my meatloaf. It's like double almost. But that's okay because I love it. I always, I always like to, I guess I'm just like my dad. I always like to get those veggies in there, extra veggies, so... Well, that's cooking. Like I said, we're going to smush up our chickpeas. We don't have to do the refried beans because they're already smushed up. Smush them. Oh, I hate doing this. This is probably why I don't do it because I don't like doing the chickpeas. If I wasn't so lazy, I would get out my food processor. But who wants to clean a food processor for one can of chickpeas? <laughs> I feel like if I made these chickpeas from scratch and I had them in the fridge, it would be a lot easier to do because they would be softer, but the ones in the can is so hard. I should just shut up and smash these up. <laughs> Alright, well we don't need to watch you struggle this whole no. time. No. Maddie did a fine job. Uh, <laughs> I tried. Crushing these up because I gave up. I was like, I don't have time for this. It was teamwork. Yeah. So I have some portobello mushrooms here that I'm going to add to the mirepoix. Way more mushrooms than I should have. Whoop, oh. lost one. Had a runaway. <laughs> well, now you have one less. <laughs> yeah. So we're just going to saute these um, until they're soft. You know, until everything is soft. Because this is still going to cook in the oven. So even if it's not, like, cooked all the way through, at least let's get it mostly cooked through. So while this is continuing to cook, we're going to add the rest of the ingredients to the bowl. So over here we have some beautiful fresh Italian parsley. We also are going to be adding some pepper. I like crank a lot it. of pepper. Crank, 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 crank. If you don't want the salt, you don't have to put it in. I happen to like a little bit of salt. So I'm going to do, that's probably half a teaspoon of salt. Uh, my can of refried beans that is fat free. It's just beans, salt, and water. And I already drained off some of the aquafaba from this. Oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> we'll also be adding in some uh, vegan, accidentally vegan steak sauce for that beefy flavor. Oh, and the thing is stuck on there. There we go. So we'll do like two tablespoons. We're also going to add a little gluten-free tamari. That also is going to be like two tablespoons. 
You can't have meatloaf without a little ketchup in and out. So, I'm going to call that a quarter of a cup of ketchup, maybe. No, that's a quarter <laughs> of a cup, exactly. And then the last ingredient besides the sautéed vegetables, I'm using gluten-free bread. But you can use breadcrumbs if you're not gluten, well you could use gluten-free breadcrumbs too. But you can use regular breadcrumbs, regular bread. I'm doing about four slices of this beautiful Aldi gluten-free bread. So I'm going to crunch this up. I'm going to finish that. We'll be back over here to shape it in a minute. If you're really pissed about something, this will bring you a lot of satisfaction to crunch up this bread <laughs> with your hands. Wonderful. Really wring somebody's neck. <laughs> All right, we're putting in our uh, sautéed veggies. I'm glad we switched to the um, <laughs> to the black beans because as I'm mixing this, I'm thinking like nobody wants to cut open their meatloaf and see some pasty ass white meatloaf on the inside. <laughs> Why not? Because you want to see it looking like a meatloaf. <laughs> you don't want to see it looking like a uh, pasty ass. No, I want that. <laughs> that's your problem <laughs> all right so now's the time when we mix this up and get it to like the point where it's like sticking together it's looking good it is looking really good and it's smelling even better so if it's too wet you can add some flour because what is bread really but flour water salt and yeast I mean you could if you didn't want to add more bread or breadcrumbs, you could get away with adding a little bit of flour. You could probably even throw some chickpea flour in there if you wanted. But this is looking good. It is. So I've got my dish over here. I'm going to use my Aldi dish that I got for like three bucks. Hell yeah. I'm going to give it a quick spray and then we're going to get our meatloaf in there. We're going to pack it in there and we're going to get it in the oven. This looks so good. It does. Mm, I'm excited. I am too. <laughs> After we pack it in here, of course, we're going to put a little bit of layer of ketchup on there. You know, just a thin layer for now. And uh, you could also put barbecue sauce. Oh my God. <laughs> if you prefer, but I like ketchup on there. I, I don't want, you know, I don't want barbecue. I want ketchup. Okay. How do you feel about it? What do you prefer? I think I would prefer ketchup as well. Yeah. All right. Let's do the fine tuning here. Lovely. This pan was made for this meatloaf. Mm-hmm. It fits perfectly. I'm tempted to even, like, eat it right now. <laughs> Let's cook it first. Yeah. I mean, you could eat it if you wanted to right mm -hmm. now. Make sure there's no air pockets in there. Because you want it to slice nice. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I did a deep dive into ketchup one day, <laughs> and you'd be surprised. Ketchup was uh, invented to cover up the, the smell and taste of rotting meat. Ew. So that it would be um, palat more palatable. So that's why, you know, chefs are insulted if you ask for ketchup. Like, back in the day, like if you were going to a restaurant because you... Yeah, you were saying their food didn't taste oh, good. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, they didn't have refrigeration back then, so, you know, they had to cover up the food taste because mm -hmm. it wasn't so good. <laughs> All right, this is going in at 350, and it's probably going to be in there between 45 minutes and an hour. If you are ambitious and not lazy, <laughs> you might want to put another layer of ketchup on, like, halfway through and uh, close it up. And then after 45 minutes, an hour, this will be ready. Let's see. It's going to be a good one. <laughs> Ooh. I just got caught in the rain. <laughs> it was bad. But you made it. Which we is saw great. horrifying lightning. It was bad. <laughs> but this, wa this uh, meatloaf kept me going. Right? The thought <laughs> of coming home to this? Yeah. Oh, it looks so good. I hope it, it smells really good, but I have a feeling it's not going to be exactly like meatloafy. Well, I mean, there's no meat in it. Right. <laughs> good. 
good. Ooh. Look at oh, that. Okay. Beautiful. I'll um, eat from here. Take a bite. <laughs> What do you think? It's looser than a meatloaf, but it's still satisfying. Ooh, how's the taste? The taste is really good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's see what you think about it. I'm excited. I've been smelling this while you were out. Yeah. I've I guess we're waiting. having this for lunch. Yes. Okay. I already had that planned, yes. Okay. It smells good. Mmm. Okay. Right? That's delicious. The taste, delicious. It's a little loose. It has like a creamy texture. Yeah. Which I'm not opposed to. Right. It's not like that ground beef texture. Yeah, it's that... not like anybody's going to uh, mistake it for an actual meatloaf. No, but Which oh, is fine. <laughs> the taste, it's delicious. Oh, well, thank you. Mm. Okay, I'm going to start for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how it would turn out with lentil. I think that would be good. Lentil, I would still do the um, refried beans, which, you know, the organic ones, which well, don't that's, have any. that's what makes it so creamy, the yeah. refried beans. Yeah. All right. I love the chickpeas in there because I like the little bit of, like, shrapnel. Texture. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want it too smooth because no, then it's like that's you're, weird. <laughs> you're eating a plate of hummus then. Mm. That's delicious. All right. Well, we're going to enjoy that. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know if you give this a try. I think you should. I think so too. Mm -hmm. And until next time, much, much love. love.